we have a steroidal skeleton and you can see inside ring A and B, we have double bonds. And if you look at the positions of these double bonds, they are in conjugation. And in UV visible spectroscopy, usually we are mostly concerned with the conjugated system. Okay, so conjugated system can have a minimum of two double bonds and it may extend to more number of double bonds. In this case, if you see these three double bonds, they have single bonds in between them. So it means there is an alternate double and single bond system. And so all the three double bonds are in conjugation. Now the Woodward fields and rules are devised for dienes. Okay. And I, as I told you, you can have a minimum of two double bonds to have a conjugated system. So that is why the rules are devised for dienes. So we will be considering dienes. Now, in a ring system, you can have two types of dienes, homoannular dienes and heteroannular dienes. Okay. There is a, a typing mistake. Let me correct it. So a homo uh, annular diene will have usually the double bonds in the same ring, as you can see in the first example. If you consider these two double bonds here, they are in the same ring, so they form a homo annular diene system. And if you consider uh, these two double bonds, they are in different rings. They form a hetero annular diene system these two double bonds are cisoid they are cisoid or we can call them as cis uh, geometry and these two double bonds are transoid so according to woodward phaser rules the uh, the base value for homo annular diene is 253 and the base value for a hetero annular diene is 214 nanometers so when you have a homo annular and a heteroannular diene both in the molecule, then you have to consider the homo annular diene system because it has a higher base value uh, that is 253 nanometer. So, this molecule, although it has both homo annular as well as heteroannular diene system, you will consider the homo annular diene which has a base value of 253 nanometers. So this 253 is only for these two double bonds, but we have how many? Three double bonds in conjugation. So this conjugation or this conjugated system is extended by one double bond. So when you have an extension of conjugation because of the presence of another or third or fourth double bond, then you add 30 for each extension. So this diene or this conjugated system is extended by one double bond so we add 30 for this extension by one double bond okay then we can add increments why we can add increments to these base values it's because of the fact that uh, there are certain factors which affect the lambda max values and one of them is the this uh, exocyclic double bond so how many exocyclic double bonds are there in the system? For each exocyclic double bond, we will add five nanometers. Exocyclic double bond is that double bond which is connected to a ring through one sp2 carbon. So one of those two sp2 carbons is part of a ring and the other is outside the ring. And that is why we call it exocyclic. So if you look at this double bond here, this double bond is exocyclic to this ring C. You see there are two sp2 carbons here, and one of these sp2 carbons is part of this ring, this ring C, and the other is outside ring C. Similarly, if you consider this double bond, this sp2 carbon of this double bond is part of this ring A, and the second sp2 of the same double bond is outside the ring A. And that is why we say it's an exocyclic double bond. If you talk about this double bond, both the sp2 carbons are part of this ring. So none of these two sp2 carbons is outside the ring. So it's not an exocyclic double bond. So we have a total of two exocyclic double bonds. For one exocyclic double bond, we'll add five. For two, we add 10. 
Then we have the ring residues. The ring residues or any alkyl groups attached to this conjugated system will add to the lambda mix value of this conjugated system. And for you people, I have drawn these ring residues in bold. So you can see one, two, three, and four ring residues are there in this conjugated system. Now, how will you determine which of these bonds are the ring residues? So for that, you have to start from one end of the conjugated system. You start from here. This is one end of this three double bond conjugated system. And you move along this system and you end here. So this is the end of the this three double bonds conjugated system. So any bond that is attached to these six carbon atoms will be considered as a ring residue or an alkyl group that enhances the lambda mix value. And keep in mind that the single bonds that are part of the conjugated system will not count in the ring residues. So you have this single bond here, it's not counted. You have this single bond here, again, it's not counted. Those that are not part of the conjugated system will be counted as ring residues and which are directly attached to these sp2 carbons so if you start from this sp2 carbons it has two bonds connected the two ring residues are here then we move along this single bond is not counted because it's part of the system and then we have this sp2 carbon which has a bond here a ring residue here this sp2 carbon is attached to this ch then a single bond, which is not counted again, and then a double bond, and this sp2 carbon has this CH2 attached to it. So a total of four ring residues are there, and four. so that is why we add 20, 5 into 4, 20 for the ring residues in this molecule. So the total is 313 nanometer. Then the second example, example B, has three double bonds again in this steroidal skeleton. And in this case, if you look at all the three double bonds, they are in different rings. One of them is in ring A, the other is in ring B, the other is in ring C. So they are in uh, different rings. So all of them are uh, part of a hydroannular system. And if you look at the geometries, they are transoid. These two double bonds are transoid to each other. And these two double bonds are also transoid to each other. So it's a hydroannular system dying system. We do not have any homo annular dying system in this molecule just like the first one. So obviously we have to take the base value of a heteroannular dying system which is equal to 214 nanometers. But again as you know this base value is for the dying we have three double bonds in conjugation. So you have to add 30 for the extended conjugation. Remember, for one double bond, we add 30. If you have four double bonds in conjugation, that means that this diene system is extended or this conjugation is extended by two double bonds. In that case, you add 60 to 214 or 253 and so on. But in this case, there's an extra double bond, one double bond, which extends the conjugation. So we add 30. Then for the exocyclic double bonds, uh, we have like, uh, we have added 15 here. Why? Let's see how many exocyclic double bonds we have. So you start off with this double bond here. You can see this sp2 carbon is part of this ring. It is attached to the ring. And then the second sp2 is outside the ring. And that is why this double bond is exocyclic to ring B. But this double bond is not exocyclic to ring A because both the sp2 carbons of this double bond are part of ring a you can see see this sp2 carbon is common uh, to both the rings so it's part of ring b as well as ring a so both the sp2 carbons are part of ring a and that is why it's not exocyclic to ring a it's only exocyclic to ring b similarly this double bond has both the sp2 carbons as part of ring c so it's not exocyclic to ring C or any other ring. It's not connected to any other ring. This double bond in the center, it has one of the sp2 carbon as part of ring C. Here, this one. And the second sp2 carbon is outside ring C. 
So you can call this as an axocyclic double bond to ring C. But on the other hand, if you look to the left of this double bond, we have ring A. So one of the sp2 part is part of ring A, and the second sp2 is not part of ring A. So the second sp2 of this double bond is outside ring A, and this sp2 is part of ring A. So we can call it an axocyclic double bond with reference to ring A. What about ring B? Both the double, both the sp2 carbons of this double bond are part of ring B. So this double bond is not axocyclic to ring B. It's axocyclic to both ring C and ring A. So we will count it twice. So for one exocyclic double bond, we add five. For this double bond only, because it is exocyclic to two rings, we'll add 10. So 10 for this and five for this. That is why we add 15 here. Now the ring residues. So we have this conjugated system starting from here and it ends here. So these two double bonds are single bonds. One single bond here and the other here. They are part of this conjugated system. So we will not count them as ring residues. Any bond or any ring residue or any alkyl group attached to these sp2 carbons, which are not part of the conjugated system, will be taken as the ring residue. So you start from here, you see it has a CH connected to this sp2 carbon. Then you move along the conjugated system. It has a CH connected this sp2 carbon and then you move along again it has a ch2 here and then another sp2 carbon here has a ch2 connected to it here and then this sp2 has this ch2 attached to it so we have one two three four and five ring residues so that is why we add 25 five for each we add 25 for five ring residues and the total is 24 thank you so much See you next time.